friends and greetings for the day welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing and learning a lot of fundamentals we are in chapter 4 talking about the test design techniques and we are continuing ahead with 4.2 the black box test techniques where we had covered few of them and today we'll be talking about another important black box test technique which is state transition testing In order to talk about this particular technique, the most important thing is to understand that what exactly state transition stands for and how this particular technique can be utilized for testing or minimizing your test cases for a given requirement. Now, given that we are also having another scenario where the transactions or set of actions are driven by a particular transition. Now, this is basically the movement or transition of a particular action is based on the states now states are here are different status of a particular process and there are possible transition between them now state transition testing basically exhibits the various states of a scenario or system and possible transition between them for a simple example assume that there is a process right here which has three different states s1 s2 and s3 now this could be any example from your reality and you can replace those values here. Now given that there is a possibility that a user can jump from S1 to S2 or S2 to S3 and similarly the user can come back from S3 to S2 and S2 to S1 back. Now here there is no direct transition between S1 to S3 and similarly S3 back to S1. Now this diagram represents us that a user can only navigate from S1 to S2 and then from there back to S1 or S2 to S3. Now restrictions are very well clearly defined here and that's how the number of transitions can result into the valid set of test cases which we need in order to test this particular scenario. Now in any particular scenario where we have these set of stages and possible transition between them, we can make use of this state transition diagram to represent at how many minimum test cases would be enough in order to test this particular system. In order to complete this particular technique, we need the help of the state transition diagram where a written set of requirements are converted into the diagram representation and from the diagram the number of transitions will be selected. But these are just the valid set of transitions which are displayed in the diagram. Given they are displayed, it is possible that a user can transition between any two particular states. But what happens to the invalid test cases to be derived using this technique? Given that there are invalid transitions which are not displayed here, so the missing transitions are what called as the invalid test cases. For example, if a test is written to jump from S1 to S3 or S3 to S1 is what we will be calling out as invalid test cases. So just like any other techniques discussed so far, even state transition testing helps us to identify valid as well as invalid test cases. So at any point of time, it is very simple and easy to identify the missing transitions between two states. Thus, it will be simple enough to identify the negative set of test cases too. So this technique, just like any other technique, is still helpful to determine the invalid set of test cases right from the diagram itself. Let's take a quick example to understand how this could work in real-time system. Number one, if we are talking about an example of an electrical switch or any other switch, right? Of course, you got, you're talking about a switch which is just having two major status on and off considering them as S1 and S2. But given that we are talking about an electrical switch, due to short circuit, a switch can result into a faulty state as well. And that's where we are considering an S3 situation or S3 status. Now, when we have to test an electrical switch, people generally think that there are two test cases which are enough to test this particular system, which is on to off and off to on. But if we present this particular switch into a pictorial representation using state transition diagram, we pretty much understand that there is also a possible transition which is valid where a switch moves from on state to false state. That means when you turn it on and the switch burns out and moves into the false state where the switch thereafter remains faulty forever and there is no possible return path back to any other state. 
right? Now, given this diagram, we can very well derive that there are four possible or valid transitions which can happen in reality, whereas all other if transitions which are missing between the two states are my invalid transitions. For example, fault to on, fault to off, off to fault, right? Given that S3 is having a loop as an iteration, that fault to fault is one of the valid transition, we can derive the number of test case as one here because there's nothing invalid in that case. Taking another simple real-time example to understand further that what could be trans state transition testing here. Now taking or considering the following state transition diagram for a credit card only unattended gasoline pump. Now assume that this is one of your requirement and you have been asked to test this particular system. I think where we have the state transition testing with the understanding of that, we can very well apply this technique here. Now given this diagram, we would like to quickly understand that what the scenario says and how we can derive the various transitions. So converting this theoretical scenario into a pictorial representation called a state transition diagram. Now in, initially the very first state is insert credit card and that is something where we are saying you are trying with invalid credit card because this is a in credit card only gasoline pump and it is going to wait for the customer. So the very first state is waiting for customer and the first scenario we are taking here is while you are waiting a person comes in and inserts an invalid credit card, the person will get error message and again returns to the waiting for customer, right? The next thing is other scenario where the person inserts a valid credit card and waiting for fuel type and he does not enter any kind of information that what kind of fuel type you want. Do you want petrol, diesel, gas? And due to the timeout, the state can return back to waiting for a new customer, right? Second thing is you insert the credit card and wait for the fuel type and you immediately enter the fuel type which you are interested in by pushing the grade button and start pumping message is displayed. Waiting for pumping. If in case the system does not respond here and the timeout happens and the pumping does not start, then from this state again, the transition will return back to waiting for customer and the process will be terminated. The third scenario is where everything happens as a happy path where customer inserts a valid card within the given time pushes the grade button and within the given time the fuel starts pumping right the pumping start message is displayed on the screen the pumping of the fuel happens for the desired amount of value and customer is done with the fueling as well as the receipt is printed as the output and the cycle completes and reaches the waiting for customer now if you see that if i take it as a path you will have one which is for valid but timeout at the fuel type second valid card pushing the button but waiting for pumping is timed out right third when the customer is going with the happy path around the circle and completing that so three valid scenarios or tests can be created plus one is also written for the invalid credit card where error message could be uh, defined and the transition can be terminated right there so there are four test cases which can be derived from here considering the paths in the scenario. Now I hope you got a clear understanding of what exactly state transition testing stands for which is done with help of state transition diagram. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.